For 100 years, this library has been the place that New Yorkers and people from all over the country and all over the world have come to learn and to gain access to our amazing collections, to write and add to those collections for the future. Tom Wolfe, Norman Mailer, Somerset Maughan, the stars of the literary world have all worked here at the library. Warren Buffett told me that he used to come here every day at lunchtime for the years he worked in New York. The New York Public Library is unique, and it's the only great library in the world that combines both the research function as well as the circulating public function of providing access to everyone in every neighborhood. That's a great source of strength for the library, but it also presents its challenges. Here at 42nd Street and 5th Avenue, we have the most used single library facility in the country, the Mid-Manhattan Library, and it's falling apart, physically failing. The core of the research collection, three million books, are in stacks that are 100 years old and have almost no climate control, and they're rotting. We can't let that happen. So we're going to put them under Bryant Park, where they can be safely held for future generations. And then we can build a new Mid-Manhattan in that space overlooking Bryant Park. The books get safer storage. People get a better library with a great view. Everybody wins. The trustees of the library selected Norman Foster because he is world famous for doing exactly what we need to have done here, for taking absolutely amazing historic building and making a new addition to it um, that is respectful of the historic building, in this case, the prime Beaux-Arts building of New York City. He's done that at the British Museum in London. He's done it at the Reichstag in Berlin. He's done it around the world. If we look forward to the next century in the evolution of the New York Public Library, then we can learn so much by looking back over the last century. The roots of the library as a research library, the greatest in the world, with a very important circulating library attached to it, that was its original mandate. Part of this transformation means that at present only 30% of the library space is open to the public. In the future, that will move to 66%. But remember that the main route to the Rose Reading Room, that architectural experience remains wonderfully intact. It is not changed at all. The researchers will have their third floor and they'll have most of the second floor with private areas to do their work with more librarians to help them. We'll have a new Mid-Manhattan and Science Industry and Business Library overlooking Bryant Park with more librarians to help folks there and a circulating book collection. We'll have the most amazing exhibits including the permanent treasures of the library for every tourist and New Yorker to come and enjoy. So for the first time there is an axis which then delivers you into the new circulating library. And by pulling that back, we open up the whole west facade onto Bryant Park, which is a striking architectural statement and will be seen for the first time. So this will be unmistakably a library in its feel, in its lighting, the materials, the way in which storage relates with study areas unmistakably a library in its detailing, its finishes, its very nature. This building will be even more than it's been. The centerpiece, the world of information here in its capital, New York. You know, people say the era of thinking is past. The New York Public Library is putting a stake in the ground to say absolutely not not in New York and not at the New York Public Library.